It's not surprising that Led Zeppelin, and more specifically Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, were inspired by the renowned works of J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkin, a master in ancient and modern languages, crafted a very poetic world that was in fact made from music of the Valor, the gods of Middle-earth and its universe, and Led Zeppelin has never strayed and have in fact embraced similarly poetic lyrics and themes in their songs. Lord of the Rings and its fellow books have inspired some of the greatest rock and roll, progressive, and even heavy metal bands of all time, and in particular, the two bands that I will be covering in this series are Led Zeppelin and Rush, as they have both been inspired the most by Tolkien's world and wear his influence on their sleeves. Released in October of 1969, Led Zeppelin II holds the first song of five that I will be talking about, and that is Ramble On. Written by Page and Plant, the song is the summarized narrative of Frodo's adventure in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It begins with the lyric, Leaves have fallen all around, which is believed to be a reference to Tolkien's poem, Namorare, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, translated to mean Galadriel's Lament, which begins with, Ah, like gold fall the leaves in the wind, though the release of the poem in 1989 gives this connection much less standing. Plank continues by alluding to Frodo's stay in Rivendell's singing, Thanks to you, I'm much obliged. Such a pleasant stay. Rivendell, for those of you who have not read or seen The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, is the jumping off point for both Bilbo and Frodo, and the home of Elrond Paradell and his elves. This build up erupts into the chorus and subsequent lines. Frodo has been told of his ultimate quest to bring the ring to the fires at Mount Doom and to destroy it. The girl in Ramble On is a metaphor for the One Ring, as in the book, the ring is referred to as precious by multiple ring bearers. Later, the most blatant Lord of the Rings reference is sung. Twist in the darkest depths of Morda, I met a girl so fair. The Gollum and the Evil One crept up and slipped away. Gollum in the story led Frodo and Sam into Mordor as a guide, and in the end turned against them and tried to take the ring for himself, a futile attempt. Not only do the lyrics tie into J.R.R. Tolkien's story, but the instruments as well. The song begins with Jimmy Page's acoustic guitar playing a simple riff that creates an atmosphere of going on an adventure, while John Paul Jones' bass thumps in the background, echoing like wind in a valley. Bonham is hitting an object through the song playing 16th notes. Some believe it in his acoustic guitar, a plastic can, or his knee. Personally, I hold Ramble on as one of Led Zeppelin's greatest songs, not only for its masterful use of Tolkienian influence, but also its guitar and bass and drum, which only add to the atmosphere that Robert Plant creates with his vocals. Led Zeppelin's most used reference to the world of Middle-earth is in referring to the One Ring as a woman, a Lee motif they use again in Houses of the Holies, Over the Hills and Far Away, in a lyric, Hey lady, you got the love I need, maybe more than enough. Oh, darling, darling, now, walk a while with me. Oh, you got so much. In The Hobbit, the book of which these lines are referencing, Bilbo, Gandalf, and the dwarves become trapped in the depths of the Misty Mountains, the kingdom of the goblins. After being separated from the party, Bilbo finds the One Ring, which he keeps in his pocket. Later in the song, a pocket full of gold is mentioned, as the goal of the dwarves was to reclaim their home of Erebor that had been taken over by the dragon Smog, and that is full of their gold. Keeping with referencing The Hobbit, it is believed that the lines referencing Bilbo and Gollum's riddle game, but it could also be taken as referencing the puzzle the Fellowship has to solve to enter the minds of Moria in Fellowship of the Ring. Led Zeppelin's 1971 album, Led Zeppelin IV, holds their final three Tolkienian-inspired songs. 
The first of these, Misty Mountain Hob, alludes to the Misty Mountains explored in The Hobbit, and the lyrics themselves are double entendre. On a surface level, they reference the first chapter of The Hobbit, but can also be read as a teenager's first time using drugs. The line quote, lots of people sitting in the grass with flowers in their hair, is a clear allusion to the 60s and 70s hippie culture, but a reading the song as a reference to The Hobbit can also be taken as the dwarves sitting in the grass, though in this case it is a further stretch. Further, the line quote, hey boy, do you want a score, could be Gandalf asking Bilbo to join the dwarves' quest or the hippies offering the boy in the song drugs. Later, in an obvious Hobbit reference, Plant sings... Bilbo, after deciding that Bag End and furthermore the Shire held nothing of interest to him, decides to go on the grand adventure with Gandalf and the dwarves and runs into the blue to follow them. There's a popular theory on the internet that originated on the r slash fan theories subreddit that Stairway to Heaven is about the love story between Aragorn and Arwen in Lord of the Rings. Quote, There's a feeling I get when I look to the west and my spirit is crying for leaving In my thoughts I have seen Rings of smoke through the trees And the voices of those who stand looking Theory proposes that these lyrics are referencing the elves departing from Middle-earth from Valinor. The spirit is Arwen's and is crying for her to leave with the elves, though she does not want to leave Aragorn. In Tolkien's story, Aragorn was raised in Rivendell and met Arwen when he was in his 20s. Like the ancient story of Luthien and Beren, when Aragorn proposed his love for Arwen, she would give up her immortality so she could be with him. That was the extent of what I could find about the Reddit theory, but as I read more into the lyrics, I formulated some of my own thoughts that tie into the original story of Arwen and Aragorn. The pipe described in the song could be Aragon himself, as it's first mentioned. And as whisper the tune, if we all call the tune, and the piper will lead us to reason. And a new day will dawn for those who stand long, and the forest will echo with laughter. Could symbolize Aragorn as the one who will return Middle Earth, and more specifically Gondor, to its formal glory when he is Crown King. Later, the Piper calls the Lady to join him, or Aragorn asking Arwen to love him and to be his queen. Also, quote, there's a songbird who sings, sometimes all of our thoughts are misgiven. Could be Elrond trying to get Arwen to come with the elves to Valinor, and that the tree by the brook that the songbird is in could be Elrond's home of Rivendell, which is beside a river and waterfalls. Finally, the stairway to heaven in the song could be the path of Valinor, and the multiple mentions of the stairway could be Arwen's spirit trying to get her to leave for Valinor. It was never confirmed nor denied by Robert Plant or Jimmy Page that this was the intent behind the song, but it does make it more interesting to listen to and, and try to put your own spin on what they mean in the cryptic lyrics. Off the same album, The Battle of Evermore ties the Battle of Pelennor Fields from the Return of the King to Scottish Wars of Old. The first two characters of the song, the Queen of Light and the Prince of Peace, are suspected to be Eowyn and Aragorn, respectively when in the story Eowyn leaves to join Rohan's army even though she was a woman, while Aragorn, quote, embraced the gloom and walked the night alone, which in the story mirrors when he faces the path of the dead to recruit the dead army to fight for him in the upcoming battle. The Dark Lord, who rides in force tonight, is obviously Sauron and his armies. This leads to... <laughs> This builds up the siege for Minas Tirith, as those living outside of the walls retreat into the city for protection. The armies of Mordor arrive to siege the city, as the soldiers hear, quote, horses thunder in the valley down below. This is followed by the ring wraiths who swarm the skies above the city, quote, the sky is filled with good and bad, that mortals never know. The men of Gondor know not of the ring wraiths, so when they look to the skies, they do not know whether or not the men on the flying beasts are allies or foes. An Eastern Glow is mentioned, the men of Minas Tirith are waiting for it to arrive, as it is the Rohirrin army that will come to liberate the city from the siege as they ride on mighty horses. The pain of war cannot exceed the woe of the aftermath. The people of Gondor know that whatever consequences come with the war will return tenfold afterwards, a somber acceptance of war and its consequences. Tolkien has inspired some of the greatest bands of our time, with Led Zeppelin being one of the most prolific. In the next and final video in this miniseries, I'll be talking about Tolkien's influence on Rush's work. More videos on music, video games, and more will be coming in the future, so watch out for them. Thank you.